Hey everybody, uh, I just wanted to show you kind of a cool tool that I think may be helpful to many of you helium uh, mappers or helium miners out there who are trying to figure out, you know, where is my signal propagating? Can I witness this miner? How far is my signal going? Um, you know, how much money will I make? Or how much H&T will I mine, I guess is, is the better term for it. Um, and I found this cool tool. It was actually mentioned to me by a by a uh, uh, fellow Redditor, JKW4RE. He's like, hey, I found this cool site, cloudrf.com. Check it out. You can enter info on your setup and height, and it will show you a coverage map. And I was like, eh, that's pretty cool. I've actually used some of these tools in the past, but they were actually really expensive and, and were kind of cumbersome and didn't work very well. And when I saw that there was maybe a, a possibly a new tool, I wanted to check it out. So I did, and um, JKW was correct. It's actually a pretty good tool, and um, I want to kind of show you how to use it, at least how I've been using it. I'm sure I'm making a couple mistakes and errors, but so far it's worked pretty well for me. Um, so let's get started. Um, so the first part is you want to put in the name of the site and the network. Both of these, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's just for your own... Um, organizational purposes and then you want to put in the height of your antenna the height of your antenna is based off of um, how high your antenna is off the ground there is a question about the whether you're using a lidar map so basically if you're using a lidar map you want to um, if you place it right on top of your roof this tx map you actually want it talk about how high your antenna is above your roof but um, I, I don't know how accurate that works so I'm just assuming it's from the ground floor at ground level and just because what I've seen in the field and how I'm doing it is is in relative congruence um, so um, I like it's not perfect and I'm sure I could get better at it but for for the time being until I get a little bit more information, I'm going to assume that this is from, so if my antenna is 30 foot off the ground, I'm putting in 30 foot here. So <clears throat> the height AGL in this case, because I've actually driven by this particular miner, um, and this miner is approximately four, 14 feet off the ground, it's probably closer to, probably closer to 10 feet, but 14, 10 to 15 feet is about where it's at. And then the frequency, if you're in this in the United States, the frequency for LoRa um, and helium is the is 900 to 930. So the center frequency is 915 megahertz. The RF power is depends on the on the device. Um, I'm putting in 100 milliwatts, although in some cases it could be a lot less than that. It could be 20 milliwatts. Um, but for informational purposes. I'm going to leave it at point one. You probably could find the specifications of your device um, and figure out exactly what it is if you really wanted to get super granular about it. The met, the bandwidth, um, I'm going to set that at 30 megahertz, although I think that it could be a lot less than that. Um, so take this number with a grain of salt. The coaxial standard, okay, so this is going to be the type of cable that you're using. Um, to connect your antenna to your hotspot. Uh, there's all different types. There's These are all different types of cable types. I use LMR400, but I know that it's very, the RG58 and the RG59 are very common. I see those out in the field quite a bit. So I'm leaving that at, I'm going to leave mine at LMR400. And the coax length is 30 foot. It actually is probably 20 foot or 15 foot in this case. And then um, the connectors are two. There's two connectors, one for the antenna and then one for the miner. And you can see here that it's outputting a loss of 0 0.97 dB. Okay, so the antenna, um, if you're using an omnidirectional antenna, it's going to be a half-wave dipole. Um, and then the gain, the gain that comes with your stock miner in many cases is 3 dB. I use a 9.2 dB antenna, but I know that this particular miner uses a 3 dB antenna. Or I don't know, actually. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming that it's stock. Um, and then the height. So this is the height of the receiving radio. Um, and so, like, if you're trying to figure out if you can actually get connectivity to another witness or another miner, um, it's going to be the other miner's um, 
information and I'm going to leave that at eight foot and three foot because that that's actually the um, givens that I, I was using when I when I crawled this particular miner and so the measured units um, receive power this is the sensitivity of the radio this matters quite a bit on the concentrator card that you're using and the radio that you're using I'm gonna leave that on the stock option of 90 dB and the noise floor I'm gonna leave I'm actually gonna leave that at negative 100 although I think you could actually go down to negative 110 negative 120 if you wanted to now the model this is kinda of like when you're using this tool this is you're gonna to wanna to change it around and kinda of see what works for you and what doesn't I found that the ITM Longley Rice model actually works very well um, based on what I've seen out in the field and I'm gonna leave this at 95 percent averaged and the diffraction should be off the clutter mode I, I I need to mess around a little bit more with this because this actually has a lot to do with like the lidar map that's being generated so when this tool crawls over I, I'm assuming when it crawls over the 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 map and it determines this frequency it's it's trying to figure out um, you know what is the signal having to go through and so it uses these lidar maps to determine the uh, the loss and I'm not sure how wh where they're getting the lidar map from but I'm leaving this on the stock of surface model plus lidar um, and then the resolution you can actually set this 16 meters is actually the best I mean it's it doesn't take as long to compute I'm gonna leave it on 8 meters and then the radius you have to set on 6.2 uh, this particular free version doesn't allow you to go any farther than that so 6.2 miles is going to be your um, your variable that you're going to put in there and so now I'm going to go ahead and run the simulation and you can see here on the bottom left hand corner of the screen that it is um, it is computing and I actually have another um, actual ground truth map that I, I actually crawled this wireless node here so we can actually compare and contrast what what this is saying and what it actually is occurring um, okay so this is the map that it generates the per you can see here that this is the DB so the DB is a signal strength that the received signal strength of, of the miner um, of, of the of the antenna uh, or of the end the propagation of the wireless signal sorry so in the purple you see here is it's extremely strong um, you're, you're gonna get very very high uh, signal strength there and then it, it gradually gets less and less and less it goes from purple to red and then to yellow um, and right here you can see here that you've got some signal strength over here and some signal strength over here um, and on down here you've got some signal strength and so now you can kind of get a pretty good idea of, of where this miners signal is going to propagate and how far it's going to propagate and you can see here that it's uh, let's see let's see if we can get a measurement let's see if we can see here so you can kind of see line of sight and then it also shows you this is kind of cool so this is the the terrain height of the signal as it's traveling through free space so you can see here it's 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 going from here and it's going a little bit lower 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 and then right here so and then this must be the this the reason why it's shooting up right here I'm assuming it's my hypothesis anyways this is actually the height of the building so I'm not sure exactly but I think that's what it is so let's go back and see if I can make this go away okay so now I want to show you the ground truth of the wireless uh, that I actually uh, found 
So I actually drove through the, these roads and allowed my antenna to connect and then send GPS coordinates um, and basically did a, a wireless mapping or a site survey of this particular um, location. So I'm going to helium, mappers.helium.com. This is actually a free resource. It's actually really, really helpful um, if you're trying to figure out where wireless coverage is already at. Anyone who has a, um, a, um, a, a wireless mapper can upload this. It's an open API. So, you know, if you are interested in contributing, um, this is a, would be really helpful if, for all of us out there who can um, submit their, uh, their, their own site surveys so that we can figure out where, um, where there is actually good coverage and where there is not. Um, one of the big things I've, I've been trying to push for and promote is, is, is the awareness that there's uh, a lot of proof of coverage happening, a, a proof of coverage hacking occurring on the network, which is completely unrelated to this, but I, it's something that I care deeply about, and I think more people need to know about that there, there is um, a real issue that needs to be resolved, and that's proof of coverage. And the best way that we can determine that is by proving ground truth, actually going out and determining the wireless signal strength of the particular area with, you know, members and people and members of the community to figure out, you know, who's lying and who's who's not. But so anyhow, back, I'll probably make another video about that in the future. But um, so back on track. Sorry, I took a little bit of a detour there. But so back on track, I wanted to show you what the actual coverage map of this particular miner looks. And I, w I wish I could transpose this, but I'm going to go back and forth. So this is the purple dot is where the miner is at. And each one of these hexes is a uh, a connective a connectivity um, instance. And so my miner went and it it was able to submit data, transmit data to the to the uh, to our, to my my device was able to transmit uh, data to the miner. And you can see here all these hexes. And so now, uh, also keep in mind, I I did not crawl on this side of the lake. I should have. Um, so you're going to see some green on the other, on the expected. The, I, there's probably coverage over on this side. I just didn't do it. Um, so you can see here, right here, this is the important part. So you, you're getting, I, I remember crawling this. I, was, I didn't get it the first couple of times. This is actually, the signal strength is actually very weak through here. So I'm, it is saying, it is saying that we're getting, we're not going to be able to get any signal strength through here, but we are. And I think it may be related to the fact that the antenna was actually placed on the south side of the house. And, you know, so all this on this side is not, it's not, the, the algorithm is assuming that, that you have an antenna on the top and there's free space all around it. But um, in this particular instance, I think the owner of this miner probably has his, his antenna on the back side of the south side of the house. So we're getting a little bit better signal strength over here. It's probably somewhere in this area. And so once again, here and here. And the funny thing is that we actually get connectivity right here and here. So that's actually kind of interesting. So you can see here that uh, this is actually um, a pretty useful tool. It's not 100%, but it's going to give you a pretty decent idea, or, uh, give you a kind of a, a guidebook on, on what's going to work and what's not. Because I see a lot of people on the forums will say, oh, I, I've got a miner. It's, it's uh, 20 kilometers away or five or six miles away, um, and I'm trying to figure out if it will connect. I, you know, and I always kind of shrug my shoulders like it's probably not because most of the time in the miners that I've seen, the maximum distance that I've seen that they go is usually a, a mile, a kilometer, a kilometer and a half. Um, but, um, you know, the best way to do it is just to try it, see if it'll work and see what you have to do. You know, if if somebody says, oh, darn, I can't get this this uh, link to work. What if I build a, a 50 foot antenna or a 50 foot tower or a 40 foot tower and what if i put my antenna on there or what if i go to my neighbor who's got a three-story building instead of a one-story home where i live you know so i mean and, and this is where the tool this tool comes into, into play and it will really help you to figure out how can i get more witnesses on my list because ultimately that's the key as a, as a miner you want to you're incentivized to build out a network that has the mo most number of witnesses which you know, is highly correlated to providing good coverage to all the devices that are going to need it. So 
if you have um any comments or questions please leave them in the in the comment section below you know i'm i'm also learning all this myself and i you know i'm probably making mistakes along the way but i think if we all work together we can really create a, a pretty cool network here um and i hope all of you guys have a great day thank you